So today, Jen, I want to talk about Lanero Greyleaf. This is the dungeon dweller for August. Lanero Greyleaf, that's a cool name. Did you come up with that? No, I did not. Whoever came up with that name is a genius. So let's talk about this figure for a moment. Uh, sculpted by Bobby Jackson. Mm -hmm. And um, you're going to be providing the uh, online PDF painting guide. But let's go ahead and look at some of the, the details, or let's look at some of the techniques you use to paint Lanero Greyleaf. So what are we looking at here? So this is a copy of the figure with the base coat on all of the different parts. So I've got the main color down on his cloak, on his tunic, on the whole thing. So he's all blocked in, all his colors are blocked in. Yep. Now I'm looking at how I did the hair colors. Uh, I found myself a picture off of Google that had the color I wanted and what I'm doing here is trying to match it to the paints that I have. I see. That's the base coat which is Reaper Orange Brown. And then to do the lighter colors, I use the orange brown plus a couple different amounts of blonde hair, and then finished up the highlights with blonde highlight and then linen white. Okay. That's the blonde highlight going on there. Because we wanted a, we didn't want a blonde. We kind of wanted more of a strawberry blonde, right? A little, a little more red into it. Yep. And this, this makes it a little red, which plays well against the green. Mm -hmm. So it contrasts really nicely. Yep. His hair's blocked in right now with the orange brown, right? And so what are you doing at this point? I'm putting on a layer of highlight. This is the orange brown mixed with blonde hair, the first level of highlight for his hair. Okay. And is, and you're kind of, is that thinned out paint with water or is that just straight paint? The highlight color is thinned. I want a nice thin paint so that it'll, it'll go on smoothly and blend nicely against the underlying color. I see. Based on the picture. Uh, the darker colors in the hair were redder and the lighter colors were blonder, so as I'm moving up in highlights, I'm going more towards the blonde tones and away from the reds. I see. So this is my second round of highlights, which is just blonde highlight, and you can see that's going on much more narrowly than the other colors. And here's my last highlight, which is just pure linen white, and I'm just going to dot that on in very narrow er er areas uh, for that for that last little bit of shine on his hair. It looks like that's where the, the light is reflecting off the hair or just shining on the hair. Yes. Okay, so now the hair is pretty much highlighted. Uh, now we're going to skip ahead to the cloak. Now I noticed, Jen, that the dungeon dwellers normally are really dark, you know, like they're out of the dungeon, mm -hmm. and but you kind of chose a little more of a, a brighter color scheme. Yeah, well, when we talked about colors for this guy, we figured since he's an elf and a ranger, uh, a lighter color scheme might be good to highlight the outdoor woodsiness of the character. Right, right. And there needs to be a little light in the dungeon every now and then. Sure. So again, you've got your colors blocked in. Yep. So here we're going to go with the first shadow color and start putting it in the shadow areas on the figure, which is going to be down in the crevices of the cloak. Um, again, this paint is going to be thinned so that it will uh, sit more smoothly against the base color. Now, is that str right now this color, the shadow you're putting, is that straight, um, a straight dark? Green, the straight dark green? Yeah, it's straight straight out of the pot, hasn't been mixed with anything except water. Okay. Uh, the base coat is pale olive with the shadow of muddy, muddy olive, and then I mixed imperial purple with my muddy olive for a darker shadow and a highlight of bloodless skin. Purple's an interesting choice for a shadow. Now I'm mixing that purple with a little bit of my green color because the purple is very saturated. If I used it straight up, it could get a little weird. So I'm making a desaturated purple uh, with some of that green in it for, for my shadow color. And purple and green are complementary colors? 
Yeah, they'll, they'll uh, play nice together. Although you can get away with shading almost anything with purple and it'll work okay. Mm. Again, that's a very thin mix. And just with the quick amount of shading you've done, you can already see the difference between the base mm -hmm. color and, the, and the, uh, the shadows. Most of your shading is done from them, basically. So now what's next? Now I'm moving on to the highlights. This is a round of highlights using bloodless skin. Again, very thin paint. And I'm going to put that on the edges and high points of the cloak where the light would hit it. Um, so any sort of raised area, you just put a little thin, yep. thin layer on? Raised areas, uh, areas where the light's going to hit, or areas that I want to draw attention to, I might put a little bit of the highlight on. In this case, uh, for his cloak, it's really just the higher areas. And the wet palette really helps keeping your paint moist or keep it, keep it from drying out, which is allows you to extend the painting time? Yes, where color. I live, uh, it can get pretty dry, so having a wet palette really extends the working time with my paints. And if, if you're painting and you are adding, you've, you've highlighted, and what if you've put too much highlight on, how can you fix that? You can come back in with some of the base color and either put it over your highlight if you've made your highlight thicker than you want, or you can thin that base color down and just put it right on top of the highlight if it's brighter than you want. So it kind of depends on what, you're, what, what you've done, but there are various ways to fix it. And you're just, every time you put a highlight on, you're just going back and just adding thin layers again and again to get it until you got it where you want it? Yep. Okay. Yep. I and will. same thing with the, with the shadows. If you've, if you've shadowed too much, you can just repair it the same way as you would a highlight. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, now I'm going in with just a wee bit of linen white to touch the very top edges. Oh, I'm mixing it with a little bit of my uh, bloodless skin for just one last round of bright highlights on the edges. Now, the linen white over a, a pure white, why would you choose a linen white over pure white? Pure white can be very stark. Um, linen white is a little bit of a softer color and uh, it has a little bit of yellow in it, which will go nicely with the greens of his cloak. Very nice. So with this guy, we decided to put some freehand and I wanted to mimic the shape of the clasp on his, on his neck there. Um, so I'm going to put it in a border on the bottom of the edge of the cloak. Here I'm going to paint on a darker colored border. Um, and what color are you using for the border? The, that's the shadow color for the cloak, which is Muddy Olive. Uh, so I'm just going to paint in a nice, straight, thin little border there that I can do the freehand in. Um, painting a border like that will help me keep the pattern evenly sized all the way across the cloak. Now at ReaperCon 2018, you're going to be teaching a freehand class. Basically, it's, it's a freehand... Freehand for the 2D challenge. That would be me. That, that is also me, which is why I'm doing this here. Some people can paint in a border pattern and keep it nice and straight and even. Uh, I can't without help, which is why I put that little border on there, which is one of the tricks that I talk about in my class. I can't draw a straight line. Oh, I can't either. Okay. Um, so so now what, are you, what are you doing here? Now I'm putting the pattern on. Uh, I took a very close look at his medallion and kind of broke those leaf shapes down. At its smallest, it really turns out that it's just four, four little ticks, three little ticks, a center leaf and two side leaves. Um, and by breaking it down that way, I could uh, turn it into a pattern that I could reproduce and repeat consistently in my little border. Uh, I'm pulling out some thicker paint here. It looks like the stuff that I was using for highlighting was a little thinner than I wanted for doing. And that's bloodless skin? That is bloodless skin. And there we go, putting my little leaf tick marks on the border. So they're little tricks and things you can do to make it appear a lot more elaborate than what it actually is when you break it down. Yes. Now some people will actually do Oh yes, there are people who will things. do and can do very complicated patterns. Um, and you'll just take this pattern like you did, you'll and just take it all the way across the from all the way across the, the bottom edge of the cloak. And presto, the elf was done. That was easy. That was so fast. You made it look so easy. There's the hair with the highlights and shine and the shaded and highlighted cloak. 
with this little border on the bottom. That's very nice. And there he is. That's Lanero Grayleaf, the Dungeon Dweller for August 2018. Jen, thanks for coming by and giving us your, uh, your thoughts on, on painting this guy. No problem at all. Thanks, Ron.